Hello Targ, our friends. Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here and once again it is time for another Orc Mode workout and today was Max Effort Press Day. But just a quick reminder for those of you who watch these videos and enjoy them, please click like down below. Uh, let's get over to the training. I didn't go too hard today and I already had comments in the preview. People were like, you should be stronger. Well, number one, I didn't take it all the way to the bleeding edge. It's doing a training max. I want to not miss any lifts. Number two, my strength wasn't feeling good. You know, a lot of times people will say, well, what about during deloads? Shouldn't you be stronger? I, I actually don't get stronger on deloads. I very, very frequently miss PRs or even miss ramp ups the first day back from a deload. It's, it's not uncommon for me to say if my max is whatever, 320 on a given lift, it's not uncommon for me to come in and miss 315 on that lift if it's any sort of pressing variation after a deload, even if I've eaten a lot. And, and in the case of today, yeah, I definitely felt that as I was ramping. Like that was pretty challenging. I felt like I could maybe squeeze 10 more pounds out, if that. Also, someone said, why are you losing your balance? Because I'm using the monolift. The bar is above my chest. So when, when I'm getting out from under that bar, that bar is actually like above around my nipple line. Okay. It's a little hard to do that. So with the rep work, I, I slid myself a little further down on some of them uh, to make it easier to get out. But uh, yeah, I felt like that was, was really all I could handle today. Just wanted to get a good training max market. I'm going to be doing a lot of conjugate close grip lifts. You know, and I considered coming in and messing with reverse grip in this phase. And I'm going to gear a lot of my supplemental training in a way that may carry over to the reverse grip because I tend to get really strong really quick at the reverse grip. I don't like to do the reverse grip. To me, trying to get big bench PRs, even though in the past, when I was younger, my, my reverse grip was stronger than my overhand grip. It was actually considerably stronger. So I tend to get strong at it pretty quickly. It's the issue of racking and unracking. It, it's I've run into safety issues with it. I'm also concerned that if I don't have safeties in place later, try to do it at a meet. If I train that way, it could be a problem. So I may or may not work it in. I really thought about it hard over the deload. Then I decided, no, no, I'm going to come in and just keep working close grip. I have plenty of bars, three different bars, plenty of bands, plenty of chains that I can all close grip with. Uh, so that's what we're going to do. But I decided that I'm going to continue with the trend of using the higher volume stuff, and I'm going to push volume up. I'm going to start streamlining the number of lifts I do, but we're going to start pushing a lot of 5 by 10s based off percentages, and uh, rather than do a lot of them the way I did a little bit of last month of continuing to use the bands and chains, I'm going to do a lot of straight weight stuff. Again, I have different barbells. I don't need the bands and the chains necessarily for the rep work, and if I watch the rep work and I work percentages, it gets to a point to where if I can get five sets of 10 with the prescribed weight and actually get all five by 10 on any of these normal bars, I'm probably ready to PR that bar. Whether it's the cambered bar or safety squat bar on the squat, whether it's the straight bar or the buffalo bar, football bar, whatever on the benching, right? That if we can get five sets of 10 at 70% of the last max, if we can achieve that number you can PR. That's no longer 70%. We should have a small PR in the tank. And so that's what I'm going to do. Now, I started a little bit lighter today because, again, my pressing was down a hair, and it tends to be. I uh, decided, let me just do some straight weight. Let me do 225 and see if I can get 5 by 10. And, you know, no surprise, I couldn't quite get it on the last set. Right, The last set, uh, I think I got to 9 reps, and it was grindy. The ninth rep was hard. I almost felt like I wasn't going to lock it. So I knew that a 10th rep was not in the cards. Now, every one of these were challenging. I felt like with the first couple sets, even though I managed to get 10, that maybe an 11th would have been one heck of a grind. So these were within, you know, one rep of failure. But again, I, I could extrapolate how strong my pressing felt today on maxes and come up with that. I'll try to bump this up, and the goal will be uh, you know, to move this up, and we'll come through and, and, and assess the regular close grip coming up, and then we'll program off of it. Uh, same thing if I do the rep work with the buffalo bar, the football bar, whatever. We can do all of it close grip. We can use that to know when we're ready to PR on those bars. And we'll get a lot of hypertrophy. And the name of the game, it's going to be pecs and triceps. I mean, I'm going to be very, very basic in my lift selection for these. 
we can use tons of variation with the, the max lifts. I don't have to get fancy with the supplemental work. We just don't. So pecs, pecs and triceps. It's my front delts are getting plenty of work on the closed grip pressing. I'm not overly worried with them. I really know that my pecs and triceps tend to limit my benching more. So I feel a lot of pec, but really I feel a lot of delt on these. When I go to the dips, I don't feel it so much. Uh, it's just all pec and tricep. But interestingly enough, I do feel a little bit of medial tricep on these. And I can feel my triceps giving out, which tells me as I'm doing this rep work, as I get deeper into the reps, I don't feel any triceps the first seven or eight reps. Then the triceps start to fatigue and the bar pattern, the bar starts drifting towards my face, which tells me that my triceps are still too weak. And it tells me that my front delts are overpowering the triceps. So I feel a lot of front delt on those. But we know it's, it's tricep weakness, but I feel a huge amount of chest as well. Only a little bit of tricep. Then we come over to the dips and this is all pec and tricep but i tend to feel the lateral head a lot more but i feel my pecs probably on weighted dips more than any other exercise now i'm going to throw the caveat in i am leaning forward i am doing these as a chest manner now some people will say well how come you're not going all the way up i want you to film yourself doing a forward lean get up on a forward lean on a dip lean forward so you can stretch your pecs at the bottom and what you'll notice is that the way you have to counterbalance it's not going to let you lock at the top. It, it's it's the, the nature of doing that variation. Now, that being said, are my triceps getting work? Yeah, my triceps get lit up doing these. But this is going to be a primary chest builder for me, right? It's a primary chest builder for me that works a lot of tricep. It's not like I don't feel my triceps doing the work. And you can't take triceps out of the dip. There are, are people out there who feel that no matter what you do, the tricep is going to get more work than the chest. There are people I've seen who believe that about the dip. Uh, in my case, though, I feel a tremendous amount of chest. Now, granted, I am doing them in a way that's a little more chest dominant. But we need the chest work. I do need to build my chest up some. And we're doing all of this pressing. Five sets of closed grip press, five sets of dips with higher reps with limit sets. That is a lot of tricep work. But rather than say, okay, that's all the tricep work we need, then we throw in some tricep work afterwards. Not a big deal. Then I decided just to do some traditional skull crushers, although I'm taking them really high to the top of the head. I'm taking them basically to, to roughly where your hairline would be. Well, where your hairline would be. I don't really have much of a hairline going on. But I take them to that point. So I'm taking them up to the top of the head when I do them. And you'll see those coming up next. Uh, because, again, that lights my triceps up in a way that carries over to the bench a lot. I feel a lot of medial head. And also because it's just that little bit of shoulder really makes my shoulder feel a little bit good. Right? The warm-up, it kind of crackled and popped a little bit. Because, again, we have to worry about that, that inflammation in the shoulder. And that's one reason I'm only doing certain lifts. I'm doing the lifts that allow me to build the pecs and triceps without putting a lot of stress on that joint. Uh, but in the case of, of the tricep extensions, they felt really good in there. And that's a good thing because everything's going to be geared towards shoulder health moving forward. Uh, it's something that we have to think about. Uh, and it's not to say I won't eventually throw a little bit of smaller shoulder work in, but I get plenty. I'm not overly worried about it. The amount of rowing and pressing I'm going to be doing, my delts are getting worked. I can always throw in a few face pulls. And we know face pulls hit the side delts quite hard. There's data on the side delts being hit pretty hard on a lot of types of rowing too. So... 10 total sets of big movements for chest and triceps. I don't need a lot of extra tricep work, but I want to make sure that we cover our bases. This is the one small movement I do. So I did, you know, three sets of 10, and these were hard. Pretty much limit sets. Final set, the third set of 10 with this weight, that's all I could do. It felt grindy. It felt like I could, I might not have gotten another rep. might have come down and hit me in the head. But, again... A little bit of shoulder extension happening. This is the, the one smaller movement I'm doing. And the triceps will be one of the, the only muscles that will need this extra bit of attention. My triceps in general tend to lag. They tend to need a lot of work. And I tend to be a tricep dominant bencher. They are going to be a big part of getting my bench up. But again, this exercise does the trick. Especially after the close grips and the dips. I mean, realistically, what, what would even a lot of times a bodybuilder or any of those people say, oh, how do you want to get triceps big? I don't know. You'll read forums anywhere. Close grip, dips, extensions. And, you know, that's more or less what I'm doing. But in this case, it's a little more specific to my bench needs. 
picking a tricep variation that I know will carry over to the bench, but that does get a little bit of the long head also, a little more of the long head because we need that stretch. And I may start working eventually towards doing these back behind the head with more shoulder extension again, mainly because that long head of the tricep can help with shoulder stability. Okay, I need a lot more rear delt. I need a lot more tricep. But the rear delt's going to be handled mostly by the, the sheer volume of rowing I'm going to do. I'm going to take my rowing volume way back up. Why? Because when I did that before, it's when I first hit a 615 easy deadlift. And it, it was it looked like I left reps in the pounds in the tank. Rowing is going to be a big, big key to my, my deadlift. Rowing and good mornings. And the good mornings will be a big key to my squat. So squatting and good mornings will build my squat. Uh, tons of rowing, good mornings, reverse hypers will build my deadlift. And you guys will see what I'm going to do with all the rowing. I'm basically going to have three types of rows between the two days uh, that I'm going to work through for a while. And again, the name of the game is building as much muscle as possible. And that's one of the reasons I'm picking when I'm picking. Like a dip, for example, works a lot of muscle. Yes, I need the pec and the tricep. And it's a superior movement for those to a lot of other things out there. We need those to come up. So I need to get strong with, with volume on the dips. So I need those sets of 10 to get a lot stronger. Just like on the close grip press. And then we do all these tricep extensions to shore up that potential weak link in the triceps. Because arguably, we could argue the triceps may not get enough work. Now the biceps, I'm not as worried now. Uh, they don't seem to be a weak link in my rowing. And I'm going to switch over to doing tons of supine grip rowing. If you look at the data that we have out there, any sort of underhand grip lat work tends to work the biceps on every study that's ever looked at it just as much as any form of curl. Therefore, we could argue that it's a little different. Triceps don't always get hit as much as we want on pressing, even though they could be a weak link. Biceps seem to do pretty well from supine grip rowing, and I'm going to do a ton of rowing volume. You know, we could, we could argue about the efficiency of that, but the, the fact of the matter is I'm going to be doing a ridiculous amount of rowing. It is going to be above my normal recommendations from people. I'm going to split it over four days. Like if we were to take these two upper days, we would be at most people's limits. I'm going to throw in some probably some axle grip rows, which again will be easier on recovery, but it'll give me more grip training. Therefore, I can probably get away with a little bit more because we can't move as much weight. It's going to be really secondary for the lats and stuff. The only reason we can get away with it, I wouldn't recommend coming in and doing another type of row like this going past 20 sets with it. We have five sets of underhand grip rows, and I went with 205. Now, the reason I'm taking these back in, I'm not trying to do much deadlift volume. I'm only gonna max on deadlifts on rare occasion. I'm gonna max just enough to keep the deadlift moving. And I'm not gonna do any other pulling from the, from the floor other than rows. Rows tend to build my deadlifts. They interfere with the recovery of deadlift volume for me. But if I'm not going to be doing the deadlift volume, we need the rows. The rows and the good mornings. And I'm going to train a ton of both. Get super strong at both. But in the uh, underhand grip, we reduce our risk of a bicep tear on the deadlift. We'll build biceps, where it's allowing us to work more muscle. Also, you'll notice that we have a slightly longer range of motion on some of these movements with the underhand grip. So again, involving more muscles, taking the range of motion out. Doing a lot of effective volume. Because even with these tens, I'm trying to get real close to failure. I've tried to pick tried to pick a weight that I knew I would have to rest pause near the end. And that's pretty much what I had to do. I was okay the first few sets. We start getting towards set four or five. Again, this is set five coming up here. I couldn't get them nonstop. I had to take a break to get the last rep or two. I just couldn't do it. So again, we're at limit sets. So we ended up with ten sets of chest presses, not counting the max. 10 sets of rows, and then we did some extra tricep work. Okay, we're, if we think about that twice a week, that's basically 20 sets. Now we're getting up to extremely high volume. And that's going to be the name of the game. It is going to be, for this phase of training, I've just got to get thicker. I have to work on improving body composition across the board. So it's going to be nothing but maxes and volume. That worked very well for me in the past, by the way. So it's going to be really an interesting variation of conjugate where it's just going to be four day max effort and I'm going to think of it the same way you've heard some of the west side guys like Louis Simmons say look your supplemental work is basically just bodybuilding and that's how I'm going to treat it 
try to stack on as much muscle as possible with a priority towards my weak links and in a way that maintains my shoulder health. So what do we do? We get over to the, the inverted row, same thing, I'm going to do a supine grip. And I'll get an overhand row on my, on my lower day, okay, because I need the grip training and want the axle bar. Now you guys will notice I didn't use a deadlift bar for the supine row because it tends to chew up, I don't want to chew up my J hooks. But for the other rows I use a deadlift bar. Why? I need to toughen my hands up to deadlift bars for the deadlift. Keeps my hands tough. You know, and if I do 10 sets of rows a week with that bar, with a deadlift bar, my hands will get plenty tough. That will carry over just fine to those deadlifts. It'll keep, keep the skin stronger. Uh, but these together, this is a lot of grip training. This is a lot of grip training, and then we're going to really double down with the axle bar. Uh, the axle bar on the lower day. So that will finish up my grip training. I may not need much in the way of extra grip work at that point. Uh, between 20 sets of rows with these two bars every week and then I end, if I end up doing around 10 sets with the axle bar, grip is more or less sorted. And we're hitting a lot of different angles because we're going to do again these two different versions underhand grip, do the axle bars overhand grip. It's hitting stuff with a different emphasis. We need to fully develop my arms. I need to fully develop my back. This will help do it. Just like on, on the pressing. I'm doing, again, two quite different lifts in terms of that. Closed grip variations will be a lot of different ones. Weighted dips. And then do some tricep work because the triceps need to need a little bit of extra work. But we're hitting the chest and front delts and all that stuff from, from quite a bit different angles uh, by doing it that way. And we're going to treat the back the same way. And then you guys will see, basically, I'm going to rotate through for the lower body. It's going to be primarily squats and good mornings, rotating through my different bars. And, yeah, we're going to get thicker. This phase, I'm going to get bigger. That's what we're going to focus on. The body composition, we need to bring these maxes up while still doing max effort work every day. It's going to be the name of the game. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.